coming to you from the United States of America one more week. We're privileged to be in your house tonight and to share the good news of the gospel kingdom. Last, week, last Friday night, rather, we talked about um, Revelations, how it's a prophetic book, a book of the future. What our assignment is, is to teach the scriptures there in Zambia to all those that have ear to hear. I have as my aide tonight, uh, Reverend Billy Sampson, one of the elders here in the church. And uh, it's good to have you tonight here with us. Thank you. I think last Friday we had Monty Sears with us. Yep. And uh, we only have two scriptures to look at tonight, two or three. We're going to get right into uh, our study in the book of Revelations. Before we start, we'd like to encourage you to attend Zion Word Church in Zambia, if there's one close to your house. Or if you're not a Christian, you need to really think about becoming one in these last days as time's running out. Our text tonight is 2 Timothy 2.15, and we use the King James Version. So get your Bible and follow along if you could, and we'll be, uh, we'll be doing well then. <laughs> 2 Timothy 2.15. Mm -hmm. Steady to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, it's not just enough, as you know, Billy, to, uh, to be a Christian, even though that's, that's fine. Right. We're going to heaven, our sins are forgiven, and, you know, our name's in the book of life and all that. We have eternal life. But God commands us to study the Scripture. Yes, He does. Amen. It's not optional. Nope. The problem is, is people don't know how. Yeah. And even if they do know how, they don't do it because they're lazy. <laughs> But you're not lazy, right? Just the Americans are lazy. But anyway, we're commanded by our commander-in-chief to study the Scripture and rightly divide the Word. And I think that's a key to it, is rightly yeah. dividing it. Yeah. That's where people get messed up. Now, when we're talking about rightly dividing, we're not talking about just picking and choosing the Scriptures you want to prove your little points. <laughs> right. We're talking about uh, like hand in a glove fitting all the way through right. Genesis to Revelations. And no scripture are, would be taken out of text. Right. That's the goal. Amen. That's the assignment. And it is possible to do if you have the Holy Spirit to help you and someone to teach you that knows. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, the Holy Spirit uses someone that knows. Of course, He taught then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So we're not saying we know everything, but we've learned a few things over the years. and. Uh, we just need to study the Scripture. Now, you can read the Bible. You can, but that's really not studying. No. And you have to have, you know, outside resources. Amen. Different books, Bibles, tapes, study materials to help. Amen. But primarily, you need to be taught. You need to be mentored by someone that knows how to write and divide the Word and speak it and impart it into your life. Yeah. That's what we're all about with, with here and also... Uh, the pastors in uh, Africa. Amen. That's our assignment is to attempt to help them understand the Bible and how to teach and preach it to other people and duplicate the discipleship program. Amen. It's not about a church. It's about the kingdom of God, and, and we're glad to have a part in it. But tonight we're mainly talking about how to rightly divide one book. That is the book of Revelation. And it's the last book in the Bible. There's a key in Revelation 1.18 that says, uh, Jesus said to John, Write the things that you see, things which are, things which shall be hereafter. The things which John saw was the revelation of Jesus. Right. What he looked like and all of that. That's right. Amen. As God, the judge. <laughs> but then he uh, received letters to give seven churches of Asia. Amen. Jesus gave certain commandments to them. He found something good about them to say, and then he found something that wasn't so good. Right. In every one. Right. But mainly they had problems with Satan. And we have problems with the devil. You know, he finds us. Right. And he tries to hinder what God wants to do in this earth. He can't win, but he still fights. He told every one of them, he that overcomes, mm -hmm. that he would give them something like a name. Yeah. That nobody else promise. knew. Just promises to them yeah. that they'd overcome. And that overcoming believer then is also 
uh, pertains to us today. Right. Same promises. Amen. Because we're still in the church age. And those seven churches of Asia also describe a little bit about the church uh, situations today. Right. They're synonymous. I mean, they're parallel truths. But we know that after Revelation chapter 3, the church is never seen again on the earth. That's right. They're gone. And there are those that say, we don't believe in a rapture because the words are in the Bible. Well, Trinity's not in the Bible, is it? No. But we know there's Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Right. The word Bible's not in the Bible. That's the other one, yeah. Uh, there are other terms that's not in the Bible, like sinner's prayer. Is that in the Bible? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> so you see, we can't strain it gnats and swallow camels. Right? right. The point is, the word rapture means to be transferred or just caught out. Right. And really that's what the church is. Ecclesia is the Greek, which means called out. Called out one, yep. So we're called out of the world now if you're a Christian, but then we're going to be called out of the world <laughs> big time when yeah, the rapture man. comes. That's right. And that's the requirement to be in the rapture is to be in the church of Jesus Christ. To be in His body. Yeah, be in His body. There's only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. But last Friday night, we attempted to talk a little bit about chapter 2 and chapter 3. But tonight, I want to talk about two verses in the Bible. Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, mm -hmm. which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. There's some heavy, big-time meat right there. Oh, man. In that scripture. Yes. But we believe until we're proven wrong, and it can't be done, the rapture must occur right there. Yes. Therefore, all the book of Revelations from chapter 4 on is still future events. Amen. Right. That's why it's a prophetic book, mm -hmm. dealing with the future. You say, well, what does it mean? It simply means future history, as you know. So right. God's foreknowledge looked down through time, and He knew uh, what was going to happen in the uh, events of mankind. Right. But He still seems to have it come out like He wants. <laughs> Isn't that right? Right. Oh, yeah. How God can do that, we don't know. But that's the way that it is. Yep. He well, has all power and all control. I think one, a good analogy that I remember is you've got a boat going from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. it's, that boat is going from one point to the other, but there's still people on that boat doing whatever they're wanting to do. Still, that boat's going from one point to the other. And they don't know where the boat's going. But they don't know. <laughs> but the one that made the boat knows. Yes. <laughs> That's a good the, analogy. The captain yeah. of the ship. <laughs> yeah, and he's got a hold of that steering thing, whatever yeah. you call it. There. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's exciting to be in the church, and we know the best is yet to come. And we're living right, right at the brink yes. of this verse being fulfilled. Praise God. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> so we don't have much time left. It is clear that unless one can rightly divide the book of Revelation, he can't understand the canon of Scripture. The Revelation is primarily a book about the future of mankind, revealing vast insights from the infinite mind of God. We will be blessed if we study this book and take heed to what Christ the Messiah says. Amen. Now we need to be listening to him, folks, and forget about all these other guys. Right. Because he's the man. <laughs> The question would be tonight, where are we on God's prophetic timetable? That's a good question. Does the Bible say where we are? Another question, will the world ever be destroyed? We have the capabilities today to destroy the world many times over with right. nuclear warheads. Will that happen? Could it happen? Uh, will time really end? You ever think about that question? Mm-hmm. Is time really going to end like some teach, or will it continue on for eternity? <laughs> uh, 
Is there a heaven and a hell? Is there? Some say there's no hell. Well, if there's no hell, then there's no heaven. Right. There's no God. No consequences for sin. You don't need to be saved if you're just an animal. And we shouldn't be on TV. Because <laughs> it's, it's futile. Shouldn't even be preaching. <laughs> but the truth is, there is a heaven. That's right. Yeah. There is a hell. There is a God. One God. There is consequences for sin. Right. But there's a way out. Mm -hmm. One way Thank you. to be cleansed from that. Is man an eternal creature? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. See, some think that we're just, you know, no more than an animal. When we die, we cease to exist. Right. But yet the revelation shows us souls in heaven. Right. Amen. Uh, the book addresses many, many questions that man is searching for today. And this is really the only place that we can find our answers about the future. This is the main place. One Bible and one book in that Bible that describes most of the future. Right. That's going to happen from our point on. Now, you know, there's scripture in the Old Testament and others in the New Testament that are prophetic and haven't come to pass yet. Right. Then there are some that have been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Like the prophecy of Jesus coming and being born of the Virgin Mary and all that. Right. Amen. Hundreds of prophecies that have come to pass. But for the most part, none of Revelation has come to pass. Hmm. We're still before chapter 4. And that's the reason we need to study it because we need to know what's coming down the road and get ready. All right. Another question that people ask is, who am I and what's my purpose? And where am I going? And what am I supposed to do when I'm here on the earth? And why am I here on the earth? And I never <laughs> asked to be put here on the earth. Well, the truth is you didn't exist before you became flesh. Right. <laughs> there's even that. Yeah. There, there's even that false. Yeah. That we were spirits in heaven and we came to the earth. You know, right. That's not so. When we were conceived in our mother's womb, as you know, then uh, the spirit and soul was a part of that. Right. That's a miracle. God Amen. set that in motion when he made Adam and Eve. Amen. Well, in the beginning, we know that God made man for himself. And even though man fell into rebellion, you know, when Adam sinned, it was a terrible thing. Right. Because it affected all of us, the whole human race. But, even though Adam and Eve sinned against their creator God, God still wants men and women. Yep. He still wants people. Even though people are outside of his covenant and outside of fellowship with him. Yes. And really living in what I call a walking death. He wants fellowship with them. Yeah. And he's made a way. Thank God. And he wants people to come to him. Mm -hmm. God wants you. That's the point tonight. And God needs you. You know, there's no other person like you. You're the only one. As my wife says, you're the only one, and that, that's enough. <laughs> but you know, there's no other person like you. Right. You're unique in your own way, and God needs you for a specific purpose in His kingdom. Will you respond to His call tonight? That's the question. Also, you need to know that God loves you. You know, there's such little love in the world today, but I do know that the Bible tells us God needs us, God wants us, God loves us. Amen. He's the Father. The problem is there's only one way to get to the Father, and that is through His Son, Jesus. Right. Only. Amen. The only way. There's no other way. And the way you get to Jesus is by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that are revealed in the Bible. Now, Jesus is always saying what the Spirit says to the church. Right. So He's not the Spirit. No. <laughs> no, He's, he's the, the living Word, Jesus is. Yes. But anyway, last week we were talking about verse 18 of chapter 1. And I think we've we made it clear that the revelation is divided into three parts. 1, 2, and 3. What John saw, 
what were in existence at that time and what was coming down. The right. And now let's go back and reanalyze Revelation chapter 4 and verses 1 and 2. The first thing I would ask would be after this, if we just stop and pause here a little bit. Mm -hmm. After this, well, after, after what? what? <laughs> After this, and I have to think it's it's after the church age. After the church age, that's yeah. After things are drastically changed. Right. So John says, after this he looked and behold, the door was open in heaven. Well, the Jesus said he was the door. Yeah. And yet, we think well the door was open then. No, it's open now. Right. He just saw it. Mm-hmm. It's open. And he said, he heard as it was a trumpet talking. It, see, as it was a trumpet. As it were of a trumpet. Yeah, as it were. Yeah. So he didn't say it was uh, a voice. He said it sounded like a trumpet. Mm -hmm. So perhaps it was a voice and perhaps it was a trumpet. But you know, there are other scriptures that were, it, when it says when God talks, it sounded like a trumpet. Yeah. Really, the yeah. blast on the mountain. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it says talking with me, mm -hmm. as it were of a trumpet talking okay. with me. Sound like a trumpet. But then there are other scriptures that talk about the trumpet sounds, the dead should be raised, and mm -hmm. we'll be changed and all that. So however it is, in another place the Bible says that there's a shout. Yeah, the voice of an arch yeah. archangel. Yeah, archangel, yeah. So, we do know that it sounded like a trumpet if it wasn't a trumpet. So, we'll just let, leave it go with that. The point is, we need to be listening today right, for the same sound. It's possible that those that aren't in Christ, it may, if they hear it at all, it may sound like a trumpet to them. They can't hear it. And to us, be the voice. be the voice. Shout again. Come up here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a victory, a victory cry. Yeah. But anyway... He said, and I was, he said, come up here. That's what he heard said. Right. Come up here. Now, I have to presume that he was talking about coming up to heaven. Well, wasn't he? Heaven's up. Well, yeah. <laughs> so what happened to John? He said, uh, immediately I was in the spirit. Now, we're not saying that he wasn't in the spirit, quote unquote, when he heard this. Right. But we are saying that something happened that changed him to totally be in the spirit. Man, that's heavy. <laughs> Just totally, absolutely be engulfed with the spirit of God right. and caught up. Amen. So he was raptured up. He was caught up. And the reason he was caught up was that God wanted to show John so he could write in the book so that we could know what was going to happen hereafter. Right. After the end of the church age. Yeah. So we have little keys here after this. Mm -hmm. And then I'll show you what's going to happen hereafter. Right. Which simply means after the rapture of the church. Amen. After the real Christians are taken off this earth and taken into heaven, he was going to show John what was going to take place. Amen. Now we do know there will be people that will be left here and people that will not be left here. Um, the Revelation chapter 4 and verses 1 and 2 primarily deal with a future event. Now we don't know when this is going to take place, do we? No. I think I know, but every time I get it figured out, it's not exactly right. <laughs> well, you'd probably be close. We can be real close. Yeah. It, it, it'll probably come in, you know, September or October. Right. Because God seems to harmonize with the Jewish customs. At any rate, no one really knows for sure when this event's going to happen. But if I were to say to you, I knew when Jesus would return, what would you say? And I don't think you'd answer me very quickly because he returns twice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to find out what we're talking about here. Are we talking about his return to the earth or are we talking about his return in the air? Right. So once you clarify that, you can answer the question. <laughs>
But anyway, um, I do know when Jesus will return to the earth. Right. <laughs> no one knows when Jesus will return in the air to rapture the church. Right. That's the reason we've got to be ready all the time. But I do know when he's going to come back to the earth to set up the, the millennium. And that will be after the seven-year tribulation period. Right. And that will also be uh, at the beginning, middle, or end of the Battle of Armageddon. Right. Somewhere in there. Somewhere. And before the millennium starts. Isn't that right? Yep. Exactly. Seven years. So if we were here on the earth and the rapture come and we're left behind, then we can count seven years and we'll know exactly when Jesus is coming back to the earth. Amen. That's right. The problem is, is you don't want to be left behind. <laughs> no. Because the odds of getting through seven years of hell on earth is very slim. Very, very slim. Very few is going to make it. One billion to be killed is like that. Instantly. As soon as we're gone. A third of the earth scorched. Yeah. It's, it'll be a time that Jesus said like never has been before. And it's all written in the book of Revelation what's going to happen. Mark right. of the beast, Antichrist, all of that. Anyway, let's look at some scriptures now quickly. Uh, Luke 21, 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that mm. you may be accounted worthy to escape. There it is. <laughs> worthy to escape. Worthy all, to escape. All these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. How are we made worthy to escape, you think? Being overcomers and, and uh, mm -hmm. being washed in the blood of the Lamb and accepting mm -hmm. Christ. Did you hear that? Washed in the blood of the Lamb. Uh, your sins are washed away by faith in Jesus. That's right. And what He did on the cross for you. Amen. And you have to make a commitment to Him. Then 1 Corinthians 15, 20 to 24. We have a little uh, scripture that deals with the rapture. And Revelation 4, 1 it ties in together. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Mm -hmm. for, since by, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit, afterward that they that are Christ that is coming. Right. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Yes, yeah, so and he delivers up the kingdom right then right. to the Father. Amen. Sets up the kingdom. But the point is, in that scripture, uh, Jesus came out of the grave. And he's the first fruit. From the dead. Mm -hmm. That's physically, he came out of the grave. Which lets us know that those that are in his body will also come out of the grave. Right. Which brings us to a question. When the rapture occurs in Revelation 4, verses 1 and 2, um, what happens to the people that are, their bodies are in the grave, that are Christians, and they died in the faith? What happens to their body? What do you think the Bible teaches us about that? The Bible, come, or the Bible teaches that their body comes up out of the grave. Glorified. Glorified. And that's what it talks about when Christ is the first fruit. Um, he yeah. was the first to be glorified. Absolutely. The first glorified man. And he's the first one. He's the only one right now. Right. So all the Old Testament saints up to the rapture will be glorified and come out of that grave. Because we're in his body. Yeah. If his body's glorified, ours will be too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Jesus came out spirit, soul, and body, and so will we. Right. The thing of it is, if a person was, is, is dead physically... There's spirit and souls in heaven now. Mm -hmm. And at the rapture, they'll be reunited with their body. Right. So when Jesus comes back in the air, he'll bring the spirits and souls of people that were saved back with him to be re reunited with their body. Right. And a That's lot of people heavy. wonder how that happens. You know, yeah. they think, you know. It's nothing for God. It's easy. He knows where every molecule is. And it says in there, it says the sea will give up the dead. And, yeah. you know, even those... He calls them back. Calls them all back, puts them all back together. <laughs> it's like he put them dry bones together in Ezekiel's book. Well, it's just like, yeah. you know, he formed man out of the dust of the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, our body goes back to the dust. So yeah. he again does it again with every person that's dead, you know, that's gone on by the, through the grave. Yeah, sure. 
So there's another scripture, we'll get to it next week, Lord willing, that talks about those that will be caught out of the world and raptured up and that they won't be dead. Right. They'll be like us sitting here, spirit, soul, and body, and all of a sudden we hear uh, something that's like a trumpet. <laughs> and the first trumpet will be for those that are in the grave, and the second one will be for those that are not. Right. Now that is what Amen. we're looking for, and we believe we're soon approaching that time. The question is, are you ready? That's the question. Now your only option, there's only two places to go when you die, heaven or hell. There's only one place you can go if the trumpet sounds and you're a Christian, and that's straight into heaven. Right. Amen. To receive your rewards. If you're not a Christian, you'll be left behind to face the Antichrist and the mark of the beast and hell on earth for right. seven years. And the, the odds of getting through that is really stuck to you. <laughs> so the best thing to do is make Jesus the Savior and Lord of your life today. And if you haven't, you need to pray uh, something like, Lord, save me, uh, forgive my sins, and I give my life to you. you know, it's really not about what you pray so much as this surrendering your rebellion over to Him. So I'm, I've rebelled against you. And I admit it, I confess it, and receive Him by faith as your Savior and Lord, and then He will give you the new birth. Amen. And then you must be taught the Word of God so you can grow in grace. And so uh, we pray that the Lord will lead you to a pastor somewhere that will be able to teach you and impart unto you spiritual truths that will help you stand against the wiles of the devil. Well, God bless you. We're glad that uh, we were able to be with you tonight, and we look forward to seeing you next Wednesday night. Remember, Jesus' name is above every name in heaven and in earth.